Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Well, it's Saturday, January 22nd, and the Bitcoin fear index is at 13. XRP Crypto Wolf saying, you know, I watched XRP go from $3.65 to 10 cents. You honestly think this hurts? So, of course, we're talking about the crypto market right now. As you guys can see, another big breakdown for Bitcoin. We're going to take a look at this. I mean, I did a video yesterday just really kind of summing up what I thought about this market. If you guys didn't catch that video, I will link it up in here uh, in the top right hand corner. That video is going to go into more detail. Just going to talk a little bit about this briefly today. So Bitcoin price still slumping. Some things we have to make note of. Some very, very interesting points uh, since yesterday is the fact that Bitcoin price is still making higher lows, which is a good sign. It is forming some new momentum upward. So this is Bitcoin on the daily. If I throw that on the hourly, you guys can see here on the hourly, Bitcoin is in fact V bottoming out of that, or at least as of now, it's looking like the trend is V bottoming out of that. Of course, many people do have many different opinions on this. Uh, like for example, the president of El Salvador, he has just decided to buy $15 million more worth of Bitcoin really cheap, he says, as the sell-off continues. So El Salvador, the first country to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender purchased 410 Bitcoin for $15 million on Friday with the currency trading at its low point in six months. So some takeaways here, Bukele, who also bought Bitcoin during the dip in September, announced in an emoji laden tweet Friday that the country had purchased the currency really cheap. Friday's purchase brings El Salvador's total holdings to at least 1,801 Bitcoin, currently valued at about $66 million. The value of Bitcoin continued to decline following Bukele's announcement, uh, reaching a low of 35,400 before rebounding slightly to 36,600. Friday evening down 46.72% from its high of 68,700 in November. So just giving you guys some context as to where um, El Salvador is in all this. Now, when we look at this, we're looking at it and we're thinking to ourselves, now nah, this is it. This is the end of the bull run. This is it. Bitcoin is breaking down even further. But guys, I've said it in the past and I'm going to say it again. Um, we really haven't made new lows or rather lower lows unless we break below this 28,555. That was the lowest Bitcoin went uh, from this top up here. Again, we have to remember that, uh, you know, this breakdown here was roughly 50%, just over 50% at 56%. And right now, how much are we breaking down right now? We're breaking down roughly 50%. So we're almost there. We've almost matched that same correction cycle before Bitcoin rebounded up and made a new high. So how do we process this, guys? This is from Ian Bintz here on Twitter. Total liquidation. So this has to do with the liquidations in the Bitcoin market. Uh, the one hour liquidations, $12.86 million. In a four hour time span, that's uh, at about $249.9 million. And in 24 hours, just down here, $1.2 billion dollars in liquidation. So in the past 24 hours, 365,770 traders were liquidated. We know the expiry date was yesterday for those Bitcoin liquidations. Different perspectives though. It's always good to look at different perspectives. This one from Corn DeLorean here on Twitter. Just so I'm clear, this dip is the scary one, right? And so he's bringing up the Bitcoin chart on the log scale. And as you guys can see, the dip doesn't look that bad on the log. And he mentions that down here. He says for log scale haters, log helps visualize comparable percentage change when there's a large overall price spread. A drawdown from $6.80 to $3.60, that is 47%. And one from $68,000 to $36,000, that's also 47%. And they have the same effect on the dollar value of your investment. So guys, just remember that. It's not about price so much as it is about percentage. And we have recently seen a drawdown of 56%. So uh, this is not too different from what we saw in the spring. Of course, it did take a while for us to get out of that slump. Nevertheless, it's important to pay attention to this. So that has the same effect on the dollar value of your portfolio. Bitcoin is not doing anything new. And so Corn DeLorean saying to hold a different perspective though, uh, Rob Art here pointing this out, Bitcoin has now crashed 50% twice in a single market, awaiting entries after 70, 80, and maybe even 90% crashes. And uh, so he's retweeting out a tweet that he tweeted out in uh, December, on December 1st of 2021, saying Bitcoin has never crashed 50% twice in a bull market. It has crashed about 50% once before, and this bull market again. Therefore, once there's another 50% drop this bull market, there's a definite confirmation of a bear market for Bitcoin for me. So 
That's Rob's perspective, of course. You know, uh, there are so many indicators and other um, indications, I think, you know, even if they're not uh, technical analysis indicators per se, many indications to say we could continue to rally. I talked about it in yesterday's video, if you guys want to tune into that. One of them is the low volume. We still aren't seeing very high volume. The other thing we have to pay attention to, guys, is the altcoin rally. Now, this from the blockchain backer, and he also thinks we are in a bear market now. Bear market structure, nearly equivalent. Bring that bounce. Now, for the blockchain backer, I know a lot of you guys likely watch the blockchain backer, so you know what I'm about to say here. He put up this chart here, and I'm not sure if this fractal is from uh, a previous Ethereum chart or if this is from a former bull run for Bitcoin. I have a feeling it's from a Bitcoin bull run. But um, what he's saying here is the retracement, it could happen over time, but the retracement, this part here, guys, this is what we really should be paying attention to for Bitcoin. This, you know, if you are still in a Bitcoin position, this is when you should be cashing out of your Bitcoin position. One last hurrah before the ultimate downturn. And so he is saying, you know, bring it on because this is also the time when alts are supposed to rally. We have not seen alts rally. Right now, the market cap, wow, way down, just shy of $1.6 trillion. So a lot of money uh, moved out of the crypto market. Bitcoin dominance, though, moving up, creeping up slowly. So that's another indication that we have not seen that altcoin rally. And uh, look at that. All coins have been decimated thus far. Uh, many coins down two digits. Look at that. BNB down 14%. Cardano down over 13. Solana down over 19. XRP down over 14. 20% uh, for Luna. Dot down 17. So all these altcoins really taking a hit. Does this indicate an altcoin rally to you? Well, to me, it doesn't. To me, we have not seen that final phase. So, you know, I'm not too worried, guys. I really am not too worried. Bitcoin could see that prolonged bull market. And even if it does not see that prolonged bull market, we are still waiting for that retracement rally to get up to the point 702, which would be up in and around here if this is the uh, the final low for that, uh, in and around 58,800 as per the calculations of today. So all things that we should be paying attention to. And uh, for those of you guys interested in the XRP price, because uh, I know I have not talked about XRP price today, XRP, as you guys probably know, has been seeing a similar crash, but XRP right now, as of the time of this recording, rebounding quite strongly. We saw that large wick there, an uptick on volume. That's important to note. And look at that V bottoming right out of there. So hit a low of about 54 cents. Now XRP trading at about 61 cents. So that's important to note. Um, the other thing we have to remember, it is just following Bitcoin. So Dark Defender here saying, you know, I have the update for you. Please check the XRP daily chart below. The retracement should be finalized around our Fibonacci retracement zone level of 65 cents. And so what he's demonstrating here is, uh, remember when we reached that inter-year high of $1.96? Well, we did see a double tap for XRP in and around that zone here. Let me bring up the chart here, put it on the daily real quick. XRP price did see that double tap right down here. Okay, boom, boom, double tap before we came right back up. The structure broke down again, and now what we are seeing is a similar double tap pattern coming in and around here, right? Boom, boom, this is a little lower. Hopefully that will be the double tap though before we move to the upside. So Dark Defender also suggesting not to be panicked. Our time will come, and we expected on all our structures that it would be around February to April. So chins up, XRP community. I know you guys are likely very, very afraid. The fear is real. Do you think XRP has missed out on alt season? Do you think there's even going to be an alt season? Put it down in the comment section. I really would love to gauge your opinions and how your sentiment is with regards to the crypto market at this point in time. You know, especially when we're getting conflicting rationale with regards to this market. Is it gonna go up again? Is it gonna continue plummeting? Very strong, interesting points to support both sides of that coin. When in doubt, guys, though, zoom out. Look at what's happening around the world. Of course, there is the cryptocurrency adoption, and this from Bond Crypto XRP BlackRock files for ETF to track performance of blockchain and crypto company focused index. So BlackRock, you kind of understand these guys are creating a blockchain and tech ETF that will track the performance of an index that follows companies working in this area. 
According to the filing, the ETF will track the NYSE fact set Global Blockchain Technologies Index. At press time, concrete information about the components of the index could not be identified. But according to the iShares filing, component companies will include A, cryptocurrency mining, B, cryptocurrency trading and exchanges, or C, crypto mining systems. Presumably, this means that firms like crypto exchange Coinbase and an array of public traded mining companies or the publicly traded miners are likely to be included. The underlying index is comprised of blockchain technology companies, crypto mining and crypto trading and exchanges, crypto mining systems, video multimedia semiconductors. This is what the filing says. And BlackRock's filings is a notable one from the investment giant. The firm indicated late last year that it would move to introduce a blockchain related ETF as reported at the time by Business Insider. This is important to note because BlackRock guys, one of the biggest company, one of a handful of companies in the world that essentially owns everything. Yeah, everything. So BlackRock, Vanguard, just to name a couple, these guys focused on an ETF, not so much to focus on the technology sector per se, like the NASDAQ, but on blockchain, crypto mining. This is a brand new emerging asset class in a new sector and BlackRock looking to focus on tracking that. So if you thought crypto's days were numbered, nah, uh, uh, not just yet. At least that's uh, what this indicates to me. Ripple SEC news, I know we gotta mention it because this also is going to have an impact on how the market rebounds, I think. This is a landmark case, guys, and so every update in the Ripple versus SEC case, I think, is crucial, not just for Ripple and XRP holders, but for the entire crypto market. This coming from James K. Filing, the SEC files motion, requesting until February 17th to file a motion for partial reconsideration of the DPP ruling, and asks to file 20-page brief and to submit more documents for in-camera review in support of motion to reconsider. Can you believe these guys? James K. Filan continues down here. The SEC seeks partial reconsideration of only a single aspect of the order relating to drafts and emails in connection with the June 14th, 2018 speech by Bill Hinman. Ripple has objected to the SEC's request. So they are asking to push the timeline even further, asking to file an additional 20 page brief uh, for in-camera review. You know, we first heard about the in-camera review. I believe that was back in the summer. Uh, James K. Filan also mentioning this XRP community. The SEC has also requested an extension of time from Judge Torres to file objections to Judge Netburn's DPP ruling. The SEC had two different routes to take in response to Judge Netburn's DPP ruling. First, it could request that Judge Netburn reconsider her ruling, or second, it could have filed objections to Judge Netburn's ruling directly with Judge Torres, which is basically an appeal. But both the motion for reconsideration and objections have to be filed within 14 days of Judge Netburn's original ruling. So what the SEC is doing, <laughs> James K. Filan spelling it out for us, what the SEC is doing is asking Judge Torres to wait until 21 days after Judge Netburn rules on the motion for reconsideration before the SEC must file its objection directly with Judge Torres. The SEC is desperately trying not to have to turn over the documents to Ripple. XRP Crypto Wolf asking, you know, what is the SEC trying to achieve with all these delays? Uh, Hurat Tavmasyan saying, I think they're trying to save Hinman and Clayton plus SEC credibility tag down here saying so basically the sec is trying to be the cop judge and jury and executioner 416 crypto saying sec are acting like every spoiled brat i have ever encountered very good synopsis here and you know i mean i gotta question it myself what exactly are they doing the optics here cannot be good for their case and you know is the judge going to get annoyed by this so Stefan Hubert here saying, you know, this case will never go to trial. Never. They will settle or the SEC will drop it. And I got to mention this two guys from Stefan Hubert. The SEC admits now that it wasn't Bill Hinman's personal opinion. So to add insult to injury, just on top of everything else, Stefan Hubert retweeting out David Schwartz's tweet. I choked on my Diet Coke as I read this. And here's what was mentioned. The SEC respectfully submits that these additional documents clarify the truly deliberative nature of the discussions surrounding the speech across the SEC and show that the speech was not merely peripheral to actual policy formation, but was in fact an essential link in the SEC's deliberative process with respect to Ether and other digital assets. The SEC therefore seeks leave to submit for in-camera review the entire set of the 66 documents. Oh my goodness. So now they are saying the SEC that 
This was not merely peripheral to actual policy formation, but in fact was an essential link in the SEC's deliberative process with respect to Ethereum. Can you believe this? David Ola down here saying, you know, there must be something very damning in the associated documents for the SEC legal team to do a complete 180. You can't hide from the truth and Ripple have always had this on their side. It's why I will remain heavily invested in XRP. As they say, know what you hold and do your own research. So, you know, a lot of people chiming in on this point here. Crypto Eddie also um, just, you know, mentioning this on Twitter. I wanted to mention some information here reported by Tag XRP. And there it is, folks. Some real reporting is finally taking place. The current analytics, I think you maxis are just annoyed. They speak the truth, deflect attention, yet they are the only transparent entity in this space. Meanwhile, you got Ethereum pulling stories like this, lying to all investors. It decentralized all while moving to POS. So they have total control amongst the few disguised whales. So Jimbo down here also mentioning, you know, worse than that, they got the personal opinion judgment. And this is kind of where I wanted to get to. They got the personal opinion judgment they wanted. And having that in the bag, they now do a full about face and claim privilege as it was deliberative. It's astonishingly disrespectful to the judge. And this is why I think the judge is not going to take too kindly to this. You know, after she did mention that, you know, here's the judgment. Now the SEC's legal team doing a complete 180 on that. Brian Calhoun down here saying, you know, 100%. It's insulting the judge's declaration that the speech was Hinman's personal opinion, which the SEC fought for that decision. Joseph Hansen saying, you know, and they also admitted in this filing that Hinman's speech wasn't his personal opinion and was market guidance for Ethereum. So yeah, we covered that. What are the chances Ripple eventually gets these documents and we find out they didn't hold any case breaking info, no smoking gun. What then? This coming from Cryptocrat here on Twitter. Johnny Bravo saying, you know, I think if there were no smoking gun, the SEC would not be making fools of themselves trying to block them. It's not so much about DPP and much more about the obstruction of damaging evidence for them and those they call colluded with. A lot to digest here, I think, guys. And, uh, you know, that slap in the face to the judge on this case. How is she going to take to this? Well, I suppose we will soon find out. I don't think the judges take too kindly to information completely going against a judgment that they made in favor of a party. I would think that that would almost feel like a slap in the face. So maybe if anything, if the judge does her job right and, uh, you know, doesn't take a personal affront to this, she may likely find a way legally to thwart the SEC's case in Ripple's favor. I mean, I can't see how this would go well if I were on the SEC's legal team. I think I would have thought twice before revealing such a statement. But I think guys, we have to know what we hold and I think we do know what we hold. This from Ian Bins here on Twitter. The one thing we do have to remember is that Ripple and XRP are bigger than just the United States. We know this based on the many different partnerships that they have accumulated over the years and the fact that there are continual Ripple XRP developments uh, happening around the world. XRP has utility value even if Americans aren't allowed to use it. This coming from a Motley Fool article. And even more in a world where domestic banks can use RippleNet to power frictionless international payments. Let me just stop there for a second because that ties in to this tweet from Wrath of Khan. And then I'm going to go back to that. Uh, this was a recent article. This was from 2020, actually, uh, for in the Digital Banker, where they mentioned Ripple and partner banks as an example of hybrid blockchain banking models that the WEF or the World Economic Forum favors. The hybridity here indicates public-private blockchain relationships. So the World Economic Forum holds this view and believes that the financial sector will increasingly invest and experiment with hybrid blockchain models. And then they give some examples here. American Express, Banco Santander, and Standard Charter have collaborated with Ripple, a global blockchain company, to handle cross-border payments via blockchain. So the World Economic Forum favoring these hybrid models, that is no secret considering Ripple is uh, one of the World Economic Forum partners listed right there on their webpage. But just back to this, this is global, guys. Domestic banks can and are currently using RippleNet around the world to power frictionless international payments, take that turbo-powered value engine and add it to a widely expected market turnaround in 2022, and you get a recipe for exceptional XRP returns. That's why I expect XRP to be Bitcoin, Ethereum, and pretty much any other cryptocurrency you'd care to name this year. Clarity is coming, and that is good news. So despite what we're seeing here, guys, despite that, we feel like this is never going to end. 
the SEC clearly making blunders, and the judge likely not going to take too kindly to them now that they've essentially, metaphorically, kind of slapped her in the face. I mean, David Schwartz almost choked on his Diet Coke. Can you imagine how Judge Nepburn feels? That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.